and welcome to another tutorial from Cami Page Boutique. I'm Brooke Tannehill, and today we are getting festive again with this Christmas vinyl wrap speaker tumbler. This design is very popular this time of year because they're pretty quick and easy to make for customers during the holiday season. But this cup has a surprise of its sleeve with a Bluetooth speaker in the bottom of the cup that connects to any device and can play any of your favorite music. I'm currently rocking out the Christmas classics at the moment, but you can listen to anything that floats your boat. I got this blank from Parish Tumblers and you are definitely going to want to check them out. Just like the other tutorials, all the products I use will be listed in the description below and you may even find a coupon code or two that saves you some coin. Also, join our exclusive Facebook group where you can take advantage of upcoming freebies and giveaways that you aren't going to want to miss. So without further hesitation, let's go ahead and get started. I actually worked on this Tumblr during a live in my group and what I wanted to showcase here is that the different colors that these speaker tumblers do come in and a couple of the options do come in the sublimation option. So if it's white, it's sublimated. If it's stainless steel, then it's just a typical tumbler. And if it is the sublimation like you see here, you can epoxy over it and you get the same wonderful results. I didn't prep this tumbler because it's going to be a full vinyl wrap, but I'm just taking painter's tape to get a guide for a straight line for my vinyl. Then I use just like a paper cutter that you see there, and I'm just trimming off the white excess pieces from the vinyl so that they aren't part of my design. And also I feel like it gives me just kind of a cleaner oh, like piece to measure from to apply the design to my cup. So what you can see here is I'm lining it up with the painter's tape and making sure that I have the right size for that cup. So I'm just marking it at the bottom. Then I'm going to take my paper cutter again and line it up and cut off any excess that I have that we're not going to need for this cup so that we're only sticking things where we need to when we need to. So please trim your vinyl. It's gonna make it a lot easier on you. Once I have the vinyl cut down to size, I peel back the backing a little bit and I cut probably about an inch, if an inch and a half of the backing off. And I just have that little bit of stickiness that I'm going to line up and apply to the cup. So this is again, why we use the painter's tape so I can get that straight edge. And I'm just lining up the vinyl and getting something to adhere to the cup that I can use as a guide as I start moving around. So as I have that good like lined up piece of like that little inch and a half where we'll remove the backing i'm going to push it down going from the inside out and make it sure that i have it good and adhered before i lift up the rest of the backing so i'm just pushing it down making sure i have it lined up and then i flip it up like that and then what i'm going to do and i'm doing the hand motions is i'm going to use the pressure of my hands to push the backing off so i lifted it up and i'm just going from the inside of the vinyl out to get rid of any bubbles any wrinkles and slowly pushing the backing of the vinyl off as it adheres to the cup so i've done several vinyl wraps in my tutorials but i do want to just like explain the process in case this is your first time tuning in once I get to the end of the cup where the two edges of the vinyl are going to meet, I'm gonna remove the painter's tape that I used as that edge and then reapply it over the edge that we applied of the vinyl. And what this is going to do is it's going to serve as my straight line guide for cutting my vinyl. So you can see I just wrapped the rest of the vinyl all the way around. Um, and then I'm overlapping the blue tape and pushing the vinyl down as much as possible to create almost a crease or a guide for me to take my X-Acto knife and run it along that line. So what this does is, for me specifically, I can't really cut that great of a straight line, but with the painter's tape and that extra like width under added underneath the vinyl, it gives me a great guide that prevents from any gaps being left in the vinyl and don't pull your painter's tape too roughly because you'll remove the vinyl with it but you can see it just creates a seamless guide that i absolutely love once i have my vinyl applied what i do is i take a super sharp exacto knife and i put it on top of just an acrylic coaster that had been glittered i hold the exacto knife down as firmly as possible and then I just rotate the cup around. And what that does is it gives me a nice straight line that you can see that's even around the whole bottom of the cup. And what this does is it allows 
the epoxy to actually adhere to your cup. Now, you don't have to do as thick of a line as I do here. And granted, I'm going to be covering these lines with glitter anyway, so it's not gonna be that big of a deal. But you do want to give some space at the top and the bottom of your cup for epoxy to adhere to so that you don't just have a floating design. Now what I'm doing, and you can see I just really love me some uh, blue painter's tape, is I'm taping off the top and the bottom of the cup so that I can start to paint these with the red paint that I'll be using for this design and apply the glitter in the areas where we remove the vinyl. Now, this is not a necessary step. You don't have to do this. I just like the look of adding glitter very um, uniformly at the bottom before we do the sprinkling in um, on both the top and the bottom. So again, I'm just holding my painter's tape stout, like pretty firmly and rolling the cup. And you can see I get really nice straight lines when I do this but right there I didn't, so I'm going back and doing it again. But this just allows me to have a nice barrier to apply even glitter at the top and bottom before we move into the next steps. I also like to create little tabs, so that way it's easy for the painter's tape to remove. And then we are going to be spray painting the top and bottom rims um, with just a red spray paint. So I am just taking saran wrap and putting it in the middle of the cup to protect that awesome vinyl that we used and I'm gonna take this outside and just spray paint it. Now, what I'm doing is I like to utilize the epoxy method for applying, I guess you could call this method almost waterfall. So the waterfall method of epoxy. And the reason why I like the epoxy method is because you can, I don't know if you wanna say ombre or blend, but you can bring those little touts of glitter up the cup without having any of those harsh lines that you get with Mod Podge. So I mixed, I would, had been working on a couple of different cups when I had mixed this up, but I used less than a milliliter of epoxy. And then I came in with Caliente from Glitter Heart Company and I just sprinkled it primarily on that little red ribbon that we had created. And again, we spray painted it just so that we had those nice even lines to cover up. And then, so just, sorry, covering the spray paint. And then I just took little bits of it and just sprinkled it up the bottom and the top of the cup. So here I'm just doing the bottom. You can see that because that's where you screw on the speaker. So that's what the bottom looks like. And if you get any epoxy or glitter in there, all you do is you take your craft knife or your X-Acto knife afterwards, run it in the inside and then epoxy pops right off. So you don't have to worry about it. But I'm just taking little bits of that caliente and sprinkling it until I got the coverage I liked on the bottom. Then we're going to come in here and just do the exact same thing on the top. So again, focusing on that little rim that we spray painted, and then we're going to just pick up little bits of it and sprinkle it where needed. Again here, what I did do to make sure that we didn't have a bunch of excess glitter where we screw in the speaker is I took a glove finger and just went around the very bottom rim. That also works when you're working with chunky glitter so that you don't have pokey bits sticking up and you don't have other just uh, too much glitter that's going to cut, like create like bumpiness or kind of peaks that you don't want. So I did that at the top and the bottom and you can see that that just looks so beautiful. I just love the combination. I let that dry for about two to three hours and then I sealed it twice with Rust-Oleum gloss spray paint and then it was time for epoxy. Since this is sealed, you don't have to worry too much about the glitter moving, but also since we have kind of an organic look with the glitter anyway, if you have some movement, it's not going to be a big deal at all. But for this cup, I did mix up about 20 milliliters of epoxy just so I made sure that I had enough to cover all of the chunky glitters for that first coat because one of the things you don't want to do when you're working with either chunky glitters or any glitters is skimp on the epoxy on that first coat because what that does is it causes ripple it can cause fish eyes and it's just going to create a lot of extra work for yourself so make sure do not skimp on that first coat of epoxy because I tr trust me it does matter when you are setting yourself up for overall success with these cups 
I let that dry for about four hours and I immediately went in with another 20 milliliter second coat of a little extra ink epoxy and then it was time for the decal. Now I chose this decal from Creative Fabrica and it was just so cute because since it was a speaker tumbler there was Christmas trees on the vinyl I thought rocking around the Christmas tree would be absolutely perfect. So I will link the SVG down below and also I would highly recommend getting a membership to Creative Fabrica because it just makes your life so much easier and saves you so much time and money when you can just download anything that you need at any time. The vinyl I used was a textured Cricut premium metallic vinyl. Um, it was in platinum and then I just came in with a 351 uh, white vinyl over the top and I just thought it was so cute in how it came out. It was then time for sanding and I did some light sanding around the cup since we were doing a chunky glitter, but then I just got my 120 flap wheel Dremel um, and just went around the rim of the cup, making sure that I again am creating that little sliver of stainless steel for the epoxy to attach to. Once I was done with this, I went into my final layers of epoxy. This cup did take two final layers of 15 milliliters each and we were done. I am so obsessed with how this cup turned out. I think it's absolutely beautiful with a simple but classic design. And I'm going to be taking this to all of my Christmas parties throughout the holiday season. As always, thank you for watching. It really means a lot to me. If you like this tutorial, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you can see future videos. You can also ring the bell so that you are notified of all future cup making goodies. Thank you again. I love you guys. Bye.